So, Do you mind? Uh, if you have a splitter, that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Is there is there anybody in here who's running the, the camera? He was here. No. Sure. Okay. I just want to know if, if it can hear me if I stand here or if I have to go up to the mic because I don't like standing there. So I just wanted to yell at you guys instead. Um, so I hope that the camera can be cut off. If not, I'll stand over there. It's so weird that they don't have wireless microphones. Yeah. Yeah. This is. Yeah. This is, this is, see, they, they gave us this room because they have so much confidence in us as presenters to, you know, rise up above <laughs> our limitations. You know, rise up above the time. Yeah, that's your point. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, it's so loud. Like right here, it's just, like I can barely hear you right now, you're right in front of me. <laughs> Yeah, I guess one thing, um, these chairs are loud, so if you like stand up, they go like that. So if you're gonna leave in the middle or something like that, just be a little gentle with that. Um, 
but this is like the closest thing that I have to like an academic profile. This is the thing that comes up in Google Scholar um, if you look at me. And I just wanted to point out that, that all the papers that you can see in this list that I wrote, I mean the list goes on, they all have to do with something that's happening in Wikipedia. So like I've turned my, my computer science research into exploring how Wikipedia works and, and what sort of systems actually help people work in this sort of context. So as you can imagine, uh, this turned into, well, uh, oh yeah, and I forgot. So, so there's another conference that was actually co-located with this. It was on the other side of Hong Kong Island just before Wikimania called Wikisim. And that's where us academics who study wiki things like Wikipedia uh, present about our work. But there's, you know, it's interesting that we don't have terribly that much overlap. And this is my first Wikimania. I'm actually a really good example of that. Um, so one of the other hats that I wear, and this is, this is something that just came out of, out of necessity, is that I became a Wikipedia once I started looking at Wikipedia. Yeah. So this is this is my profile or my user page uh, from around the time that I started uh, working on Wikipedia, and I just wanted to point to like I, I started off in Wiki Project Fungi. I can tell you a lot about the Paniolis genus. I thought it was a lot of fun to start contributing there. I'm still kind of frustrated about the lack of coverage about these sort of things, but I'd spend a lot more time uh, on user scripts. And so this is sort of a shameless plug. It's not really about Snuggle, but there's a few other things that I built that I thought you guys might want to check out. So one of the user scripts that I put together is this thing that I call Mr. Clean. What Mr. Clean lets you do is while you're reading an article, you can add uh, cleanup templates on the section or the article level without actually having to go ahead and edit. So this is a little JavaScript gadget that adds this template picker to the top of the article. And so there's a lot more cleanup templates than I was able to fit in the picker, but these are the most common ones. So it, it's something that I designed to sort of make this sort of work easier for people to do. There's one more that's sort of in this vein. It actually started with my wife complaining to me about how when she'd be reading through encyclopedia articles, she'd find grammar mistakes and that sort of stuff. So this is one that I call Wikinome, the Wikinome gadget. And what this lets you do is, while you're reading through the article, uh, if you have the Wikinome gadget enabled, is you can just double click on a sentence. It'll open up like this little mini editor, lets you change the sentence so you can fix uh, you know, comma placement, grammar, word usage, that sort of stuff. Just click save and then continue reading the article. You never see the edit pane, it's a really fast interaction. And so this has been picked up by the, the Guild of Copy Editors in English Wikipedia. I'd be happy to expand to other wikis too if somebody's interested in talking to me about that. So, all right, on to my final hat, which is I've been a staff member for the Wikimedia Foundation since 2011. Um, uh, so this is what my user page looks like now. Um, I, I wanted to, to show you this because, it, I mean, it pushes all the content down to the bottom, so I couldn't really throw out my Wikipedia cred because um, all the, the research and, and staff stuff is at the top. Um, but So what I do at the foundation is I do research into the kind of features that we release. So, so I did a set of um, got four studies for the article feedback tool, looking at the kind of quality feedback that would come in and that sort of stuff. I did a study for, for Echo, so some of the results that Fabrice was presenting in his Echo uh, presentation, or the notifications presentation, uh, was some of the research that I had done. And I've also done research on visual editor and the fact that it's having on, on new users in the system. So you can actually see like the, the results of this sort of stuff. This is, I just wanted to give you a sense for what, what like the output of my research looks like, is I, I spend a lot of time measuring user behavior. This is sort of the research that I do alongside my CS degree, so it fits really nicely together. Um, but I'll measure like in a control and test condition, how much or what sort of things change, what changed about people's behavior and that sort of stuff. Uh, so really what I want to talk to you guys about is something that was actually my first real interaction with the foundation as a staff member, was I was brought in to, with, a, with a group of other researchers to look at, well, why the heck does this graph look the way that it looks? I'm sure you guys are familiar with this graph. It's generally referred to as the decline plot. Um, it's showing the number of active editors measured by five edits per month in the English Wikipedia over time. And so really what they were doing is looking at this decline and saying, what the fuck? We should try and figure this out. Um, so the foundation brought, a, brought in a bunch of researchers like myself. We were mostly grad students. There was one professor. We, we worked with uh, Diedrich, who is um, uh, also working on analytics at the foundation. And we, we spent a lot of time trying to ask, answer this question by measuring well and, and reasoning about what we could about how these systems come together with our, our different academic backgrounds. And so we did a lot of user modeling and how contribution changes over time. We did a lot of uh, modeling of how conflict uh, leads to uh, people's behavior and people leaving the system. We also looked at um, just general patterns of how cohorts, depending on the year that they joined Wikipedia, were increasing or decreasing their activity over time. And you know, we did a lot of general work with the wiki too, uh, because we just had this database in front of us, so we could answer questions like, what are the most red-linked articles in Wikipedia? This is something that actually came invaluable because this list was used as soon as we generated it. In fact, it should really probably be updated. 
Um, and another thing that we looked at is where do newcomers go to help or go for help when they come to the system? And this sort of led into why I ended up working on Snuggle. So um, there's just a little bit of, like, I don't want to throw a bunch of figures and stuff at you, but there's, there's a little bit that I think is really important to why, why I actually set out to build Snuggle as, as a tool for Wikipedians. Um, so what, I, what I'm showing you in the upper left-hand corner here is a graph that's showing you the, the rate at which newcomers who join Wikipedia are trying to do something productive. There's these two lines here. The solid line is, is the proportion of newcomers joining the, the, the wiki who are already doing it productive, like shouldn't have been reverted, they were already contributing productively. And the, the dashed line is our, our newcomers who are at least trying to contribute productively. And so you notice that there was like an early, early adopter, late adopter effect in Wikipedia, but it happened in 2006, which was a year before the decline. So from 2006 over, it's pretty much stable. About 80% of the newcomers who register an account to make at least one edit in Wikipedia are trying to do something productive, half of them are already doing it productively. Um, but uh, between 2006 and 2007, you saw this spike in the rate at, the, at which these newcomers were being reverted. And you know, this actually, I, I don't want to point at people being jerks, but quality control became an important thing around that time in Wikipedia. So a lot of these rejections, even though you know it was rising for newcomers, they were probably a good thing. But regardless, uh, when we look at the rate of retention of these newcomers, there's this dramatic fall in 2007 that corresponds to the peak of, of growth in Wikipedia. And I want to I make sure that I point this out. This is a proportion. So even though the rate at which new users are registering accounts um, uh, is, is uh, basically constant, it's kind of smooth, it's going over, this drop in the proportion of user, new users who stick around, good new users who stick around, um, is what looked like was causing the decline. And we had a bunch of models that sort of uh, pointed this out. One of the things that was most predictive uh, when we were doing this analysis was Huggle. Uh, when a newcomer got reverted by Huggle and sent a warning message from the system, um, they, were, they were more likely to leave. And I forgot, I should actually probably explain what Huggle is. So Huggle is this user interface. It shows you a list of sorted revisions on the left-hand side of the screen and the diffs of those revisions. Um, and all you have to do is, as you're using this tool, is click the play button if it looks good and it'll show you the next revision. Or click the, the big red button in the upper left and it will revert this revision and send that user a warning. Um, so I don't want to hold Snuggle up as a bad example. In fact, I think Snuggle is, or sorry, Huggle as a bad example. Huggle is brilliant in that it lets people go through the work of doing quality control really, really fast. It just happens to be correlated with the problem that I, well, I built Snuggle to solve. So anyway, so I think Huggle has a big thing to do with this decline, but it's not actually the problem. It was just a solution that, that created um, a, a smaller problem than it was actually solving. So in other words, I want to tell you the story that we came up with with this research, and that's um, from 2002 to 2004, quality control in Wikipedia was pretty easy because there just wasn't that much stuff happening. From 2004 to 2007, the encyclopedia was growing massively. And so people put together tools like Fubot and Huggle, these anti vandalism tools that make doing quality control way faster. But these tools had this sort of unforeseen consequence that by, by being so efficient, we were pushing newcomers away. But we were essentially sitting over their shoulder, and as soon as they made a mistake, we pushed them out of the chair and said, no, 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 you have to do it this way. Um, so, so the problem is that quality control is just too efficient. The speed and efficiency of contravandalism is demoting, demotivating good faith users. So by, by doing the thing that Wikipedia needs done, we're, we're demotivating these newcomers. So what do we do? Um, and so I want to, with Snuggle, improve the speed and efficiency of newcomer support so that we can counteract this sort of effect. So, so my goal in, in all this is to provide a means for wiki mentors uh, to find and support good faith newcomers before it's too late, before those newcomers leave. So, uh, now without further ado, I'll show you what the heck this snuggle thing is. Ah, so this is uh, a version of snuggle uh, that I have actually, I have it running on my laptop because the servers at the University of Minnesota, it's just too, too slow to access them from here. I didn't actually realize that problem, so I'm gonna be talking to my, my snuggle users who live in this area to see how bad it is for them and see if there's anything that I can do for them. But anyway, so I don't wanna to talk to you too much about this screen just yet. Instead, I want to just hop into the tool and show you what, what it's able to do. So right now, we're looking at a list of newcomers who joined the English language Wikipedia in the last 30 days. Um, they're sorted by an algorithm, which I actually have documented up on, on Meta, um, that predicts the probability that these newcomers are editing in good faith. Um, so this newcomer that's at the very top right now is most likely editing Wikipedia in good faith. 
So if I click on the, that user rectangle, we can see that it expands, and it gives you a little bit of information about this user. So on the left-hand side here, here's some statistics that I generated about them, so you can see uh, how long they've been in the wiki, how many times they've been viewed inside of Snuggle. You can look at uh, a, a graph of where they're doing their revisions and see that they were reverted seven times. But the thing that I think is really interesting inside of Snuggle is actually this interactive graph that I put together. So while you're looking at this user, you can pull up this little dip viewer thing, and you can hop around. Oh yeah, I should probably explain the graph. So, x-axis, days since registration, y-axis is edits. So I'm actually making a bar chart of their actual activity in the system. And uh, so I can, I can navigate around this graph and look at the edits that they've been doing over time. When you see an edit with a dot in the middle, that means that the revision was reverted and I'm pulling in the reverting revision and looking at the comment. Um, so what I'm hoping is that a wiki mentor can come into the system, see what a bunch of the, the newcomers who are most likely to be trying to be productive are doing, and go see why exactly they're being reverted. Now there's another thing that I want to show you, which is uh, the stuff that's on the right-hand side of the screen. So this is a summary of what's happening on this user's talk page. So remember a little bit ago, I told you about Huggle. So uh, Huggle uh, doesn't just revert new users, it also sends a warning message to them. This is actually really important. It's part of English Wikipedia's uh, quality control system of discovering which new users need to be blocked because they're regularly doing vandalism. And so, so they sort of put like this report card um, on their talk page uh, I am hoping that wiki mentors can take a look at this and do something with it. So, no, remember again that I told you that this list is sorted by the probability that the user is good faith. Uh, you know, it's machine generated, but it's, so it's not perfect. But you notice that there are some of these things that are popping up that say spam and warn and that sort of stuff. Those represent warnings that were posted on this user's talk page. So really quick, we can look at this new user net put, put ball, and uh, see that, uh, that the algorithm thinks that they're high quality. Um, we can look at the edits that they've been doing, and we can see that they've gotten a warning. They got a welcome message too. Um, you know that's that's interesting because very often when a user ends up with a warning, they don't have a welcome message unless it's a warning welcome message, which I have trouble categorizing inside the system. Um, and we can actually interact with this person. So I can see that uh, there's these th things that are on the right hand side here. These are invitations to the the uh, Wikipedia Tea House. Um, this is, this is a, a place for mentors that are doing sort of peer-to-peer -peer mentorship to, to tap into Wikipedia. And so I see that this user doesn't have one of those. They don't have an invitation to the tea house. So we might want to send one, right? So let's, let's give it a try. So inside the tool, I can click on this actions thing, tell them they invite to the tea house. Oh, darn, I have to log in. This, is this hosted on a web page or is this a... Is oh yeah, yeah, sorry, this is just a web page. Once I, I, I made it like uh, full screen because it's like the resolution of this monitor is really low, but I'll, I'll pop out, you can actually see the URL of where to go and that sort of stuff. So anyway, so now it's showing me a preview of the, the tea house message that I'm gonna post on this user's top page. It actually tells me the summary that it's gonna put in place and that sort of stuff too. And so all I have to do, oh yeah, and I forgot, I can customize this. It'll actually give me a live preview, so I'm just gonna make some stuff in there so that it'll, it'll just preview in a second. Um, so you can see it'll actually show you what the message is going to be formatted like and that sort of stuff. But anyway, I don't want to customize the message. I'm just going to leave it as it is and uh, post this on the user's top page. Drawback. I was I was trying to I really wanted to show you guys like the bleeding edge version of oh well, you know this is bad token this is actually a quote that I have to file if I try it again it's just gonna work. Okay anyway. Oh, that was going to be so cool. <laughs> um, so actually, you know what? I have a better idea. So since I, I still have uh, a couple minutes left, I'm going to uh, hop over to the, the real version of Snuggle, not the non-development one that's running on my machine. Um, so it's going to be a little bit slow, but you will get the idea. OK, so that's the screen real quick. I'm going to come back to that screen that I was just showing you in a second. but. Uh, let's let's get a tea house invitation sent out before uh, before I lose all all faith that you have in me as a software developer. Um, let's see. So ah, perfect. So our user right at the top um, looks like there's only one message talking to this user about policy. 
I can look through the edits that they've been doing. It looks like they've been doing some linkify, um, scanning some content, they got reverted. Uh, they changed the info without a source, which is something that a lot of newcomers do and, and run into trouble for, for good reasons and bad reasons. Because sometimes, I, I see this an awful lot in Stumbleos, newcomers will often get reverted and sent a warning for, you know, maybe it should have been reverted. Maybe it was pretty obvious what they were trying to do and they just screwed up the formatting a little bit. That's something that I see a lot and it's, it's a really good opportunity to send a message. So anyway, it looks like this newcomer is, is trying to do something productive. They ought to have an invitation to the tea house. So I'm going to log in real quick again and send them an invite. He spilled your username wrong. Oh, I did. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, there we go. There's my message. And submit. Yes! Yeah. All right! <laughs> Woo! Okay, so, so anyway, so, so my goal with this tool is that I can have um, these mentors that are working in Wikipedia go through newcomers in the exact same way that they might go through the new edits that are happening through Huggle um, and get this work done faster to find these good newcomers in the system. Um, if you were in a session that I was in before, I asked one of the, the people who was talking about getting women involved uh, from India and Wikipedia, and there's this sort of open question, how the heck can mentors find good newcomers before it's too late? And I'm hoping to have Snuggle fill that role. So there's a problem anytime that you have an open system like this. And so you can just go to this web page. You can see at the top it's snuggle.grouplens.org. I mentioned before, Grouplens is my university website. I'll be moving this to labs hopefully in a couple weeks. It depends on some software engineering that has to happen at the, the foundation. But anyway, um, so anybody can come into the system. So long as you have a Wikipedia account that isn't banned, then I allow you to do work. Um, Many people may not know what they're doing with mentoring. They may, they may, you know, in good faith, just be making mistakes. So I wanted to make the system transparent. I wanted it to be so that people could check on each other's work. This is what we do in Wikipedia with the recent changes feed. So Snowball has its own recent changes feed, and that's the first thing that comes up when you come to the system. So it shows you this recent activity thing, um, which is which is actually showing you the, the the most recent thing that people are using the system. So you can actually see that iJethroBot is one of my most prolific users. He's awesome. I think it's a he. Anyway, he's great because he, he does a lot of work in, in marking users good faith. I can show you that, I'll show you that in a second. Um, and sending these invitations to the tea house to make sure that these people find a good space to work in. Um, so like let's say that I, I disagreed with uh, or I wanted to check on iJethroBot's work. Um, inside of this, this part of the system, I can just expand the, the user again. That's kind of gross, I'll fix that. Anyway, um, and I can go see, well, so the iJethroBot categorized this user as ambiguous. That's, that's sort of a, a weird classification to give. It, it really happens when you're not, when somebody's doing something that looks productive, but it, they might be pointing a, uh, pushing a point of view or something like that. And so I can go through the edits inside this history view and go see if I, if I agree or I disagree with uh, iJethroBot's classification of this user. Um, and I, I, you know, we're probably not going to go through this. In fact, uh, you know, if we, if we had time, if, if lunch didn't go over, <laughs> we may have had some time to do a little bit of snuggling while we were here. But so I really encourage you guys right now, if you're interested in mentorship or that sort of thing in English Wikipedia, you should take some time yourself, try out the tool, and give me some feedback. Um, so, So now, what do I need? Like, why am I here and why am I talking to you? Well, a big thing that I need is users. Um, because, you know, it's a big thing with user-centered design. I, you know, I thought that this tool would be important. My research suggests that it would be important. But I am not the user. I need you guys to use the tool. Tell me what you need as mentors in the system. If you know other people that are mentors, I would love if you would get them in contact with me. Um, I also need liaisons. I'm working right now with um, a, a couple people from the Portuguese Wikipedia and the Catalan Wikipedia to adapt Snuggle so that they'll be able to use it to monitor newcomers in their own system. And I need developers. I'm just a one-man show. So, so when it comes to internationalization, adding new features, fixing the kind of bugs that I got stuck on earlier, you know, it's just me. And I'm trying to write a thesis. And I'm doing analysis for the Wikimedia Foundation. So I, I spend all my free time working on Snuggle, but that free time is scarce, so I can really use some help. Thank you. Any questions? There you go. Yeah, okay. Uh, disclosure, I'm a big fan of this, uh, so you know I'm excited I'm with this project, but I, I have a few questions about this uh, from a user perspective. So I've never actually uh, engaged in mentoring using Snuggle, but I was uh, thinking that there's a lot of information that you display on the interface. 
And I think this is fantastic because people really want to drill down and if I look up into your edits. But to me, the first impression is it's very hard to have like, a concise indication of, uh, you know, do I really need to engage with that user? Is it going to be like, useful for me or useful for him or her to actually interact and use this tool? And I see you have uh, the user observability uh, score to rank uh, users, but you're not providing a score in a measurable way. And I think it would be actually driving interesting discussion if people were to say, look, what is the uh, distribution of the score, right? Am I just talking to people who are just one day are just like very bad, but I don't know them because they show up and don't do this? And getting a conversation around uh, the, the ranking and what makes you use it, I think maybe I just need to think back uh, uh, to, to evolve this algorithm into something more useful. So if I could, I could say that, that discussion point again. So, so the first concern is that like Snowball is really busy. It has a lot of information that it's showing you. I mean, gosh, look at that, Jesus. <laughs> so essentially what I did with this tool is, I, I mean, I, I built the thing that I thought would carry enough, like the, the types of information that people might want. And so this is a big part of the feedback process, is that like I'm totally open to redesigning this tool. I'm totally open to finding new ways for people to interact with the system. So if I have users push back on me, like this information is just not valuable to me, this information really is, then that's something that I'd be really happy to, to make the system less cluttered. I'm already working on ways to get some of that clutter uh, beneath menus. So, so it won't be slammed in your face as soon as you look at a user. You may only expand that menu once you get to that point. So the other concern was that I'm sorting, I'm sorting newcomers in the system uh, by this desirability metrics that, I, that I've been working on that, that makes like a probabilistic guess. It's actually using Vandalbot scores in order to do this. Um, but I'm not surfacing that. That's a really good criticism. That's a very easy thing for me to add. So I should add that to, if you would, add that to my bug tracker. Then I'll make sure to get to it as soon as I possibly can. So I'm, I'm kind of active in adoption. And uh, for this to be more useful for us, I think other people in the program, uh, what would be great is if we could just see our, uh, the view of our abilities, our properties, instead of uh, everybody just uh, doing the with the activity which I guess is uh, what you're showing, right? Uh, so you're, you're talking about the recent activity feed, which is showing what, what everybody is, is doing in Snuggle, that you might want to only monitor a few users who are involved in your particular wiki project, like the Adopt a User Program in English Wikipedia. Yeah, that's a really good idea. So the, the only thing that I have to work out is how the heck can I look in the data to figure out which users those are. So you, I might have you manually add those users to a group or something in the system, or you might even just categorize the user page um, as adopt a user member or something like that. And so, so really what we have to figure out is just how to group them and then how to express it in the interface, and then that's not a problem, we can do that. So there's actually a standard I gotcha. Great. Um, so, so again, that's that's awesome. I'm totally gonna forget. Please add it to my bug tracker. Great okay. idea. <laughs> so I would like to add a plus one to that feature request because I was thinking how I can use Spark and Snuggle, and I've been uh, mentoring and finding new users for quite a while using uh, primarily to keep projects straight. I don't know if you are familiar with the new R toolbox, but the new R toolbox tool list for the Wiki Project which is quite a lot. New articles related to their fields, so they are, who created them. I monitor this for some key projects and I get regular articles welcome you have a user striking by the Wiki House. And I would love to have the option of using Snuggle to do so if I can just tell Snuggle leaving your new, new user feed on the group that appear on this page because if then we have a page where all those users are listed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's that's. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. It's it's a use case that I don't think of. This is this is exactly why I'm here. So I, I'm really glad that you did. I hope that we can talk more later and I can figure out uh, exactly how I can change things to meet that need. And maybe we can get Matthew to set up and then maybe take one more question. I have another comment. So you might also see which edits not only get converted but which ones have a follow up edit after them. So they're probably okay. Sorry, which edits? Oh, we're, we're reverted back too. No, no. Oh. If it's not reverted, but somebody else followed up with another edit, that means that probably the newcomer's edit is actually uh -huh. edited. So, so yeah, that's that's a, it's cool that you brought that up. There's actually a little bit of work that somebody in my lab was doing with trying to figure out like how long does 
How many how many revisions following an edit do you have to wait, or how long do you have to wait before you know that an edit is probably good? Um, so so we already have a way to, to do that sort of thing. So yeah yeah that's that's another interesting thing that we can look into. Thanks. So I've already started playing around with uh, Snapchat a while back. I hope it can improve it so we the primary thing to do the results. Yeah, me too. Thanks guys. Thank you. All right, next up we have uh, Matthew Wurtzler presenting on making your user experience easier to learn, a guided tour. While we're setting up, and even has any other questions or any comments they want to talk about, either this or this for the project or mentoring in, in general, experience in general. Uh, yeah. decide we're not doing the desirability sorting or a way to do it in that system because the vandal fighting bots don't run in every language. That's something that I'm working on right now is a general way to do the desirability detection. So, yeah. so speaking of which, final comment, uh, uh, is there anything that people working at languages uh, could could do to help you basically track activity that you want to uh, to log in, in Snuggle? So you have, for example, Tea House, you have other flags you're adding. I'm wondering from a community perspective, from a developer perspective, what can people do to facilitate this work? You know, it's, it, that's a, it's a really good question. It turns out that there's, there's already a lot of consistency across the wiki in the templates that people use and the categorizations that people do. So that's why I was able to do that categorization of people's talk pages and tell you what kind of messages are already there. But that's something I, I actually spent a little bit of time with the Tea House uh, templates to make sure that they were consistent, that they could be picked up really well by, by my tool and other tools as well. Um, so uh, essentially, if, if that's something that my users want to get, if there's like a method type that we want to get, it's really trivial to add these sort of things. If you're familiar with regular expressions, it's, it's, it's a simple regular expression, and if you're not familiar with regular expressions, it's really just simple pattern matching. If I know what the template is called, we can just use that. 